Tubman in the United States, perhaps you've heard of her. She helped rescue Africans who were enslaved, took them up north on what is called the Underground Railroad. She said, I rescued hundreds of my people from slavery, and I could have rescued hundreds more if only they had known that there were slaves. A lot of us are afraid of freedom, let's face it. We've gotten used to oppression. We've adjusted to it. We don't even want to be identified with something like this. We're scared. Harriet Tubman was not afraid. Here's a sister named Mary Ellen Pleasant, a black businesswoman in California in the 19th century who helped finance a revolt. A brother named Martin Robeson Delaney, who gave us the expression, Africa for the Africans. His full expression was, Africa for the Africans with black men to rule them. Now, a lot of these people you're not going to be familiar with. Frederick Douglass, a man named Edward Wilmot Blyden from the Virgin Islands, another 19th century race man, a freedom fighter. Here's a brother you might know named France Fanon from Martinique. He wrote a series of books, a book called Wretched of the Earth, a book called, a book called Black Skin, White Math. That would be good reading here in Denmark. A woman named Mary Ann Shedd Carey, who published the first newspaper in North America, a black woman. A sister named Ida B. Wells, called a crusader for justice. She was a journalist and a little bitty woman. Sometimes she was threatened and she would carry two and three guns around with her. She was no joke. Now, in the tradition of her time, she called her husband in public Mr. Barnett. But to show what a liberated woman she was, she called her first-born daughter Ida B. Wells, Jr. <laughs> African-American scientist, a brother named George Washington Carver, and another scientist named Louis Latimer, and another scientist named Ernest Everett Just, actually a marine biologist. He is the father of Black History Month, a man named Carter G. Woodson. A great athlete, intellectual, entertainer, singer, race man, activist named Paul Robeson. Yeah. My man, Marcus Mosiah Garvey, who said, a people without knowledge of his past is like a tree without roots. And Garvey again. I love Marcus Garvey. I'm a Garvey yeah. The great Malcolm X, when he was a youngster, Malcolm X and Martin Luther King together, Malcolm X given the great historian J. Rogers an award, the great Kwame Nkrumah of, Nkrumah of Ghana at the independence of Ghana, March 6, 1957. And here's what Nkrumah said. All people of African descent, when they live, I want you to hear this now. All people of African descent, when they live in North or South America, the Caribbean, you could have said Europe, or any other part of the world, are Africans and belong to the African nation. I think Nkrumah is the greatest African in modern times. Tried to unite the whole of Africa. Here's Nkrumah and Martin Luther King. A lot of people don't know Martin Luther King went to Africa several times. The King carefully monitored the African liberation movement. And Africans in Africa were inspired by the civil rights and black power movements in the United States. The struggles are really won. Here's a sister in the U.S. you may have heard of named Rosa Parks, who refused to give up her seat to a white man on a crowded bus in Montgomery, Alabama. Another woman you probably don't know named Fannie Lou Hamer. She used to say, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Yeah. <laughs> An educator named Mary McLeod Bethune. Here's a sister who was about what we call reparations. Some of us believe Africans need to be compensated for what we have suffered at the hands of Europeans. We call that the reparations movement. And this is a woman named Queen Mother Moore, big reparations activist before it was popular. A brother from Martinique, a great poet and activist named Amy Césaire. And here's something for you. This is from a psychologist named Amos Wilson. He said, if we don't know who we are, then we are whoever somebody says we are. So if you don't know who you are, you'll be a nigga. You'll be a bitch and a hoe. Because that's how the media defines you. So if you don't define yourself, if you don't know who you are, then other people will put a label on you and you'll walk with that. Now, I'm an African in America. I repeat, I'm an African in America. That's who I am. That's how I define myself. That's what's acceptable to me. Finally, 
just about five or six images of African children. These are all original photographs, pictures I've taken in different parts of the world. And they're looking at each and every one of you. And they're telling you different things. This brother is looking at you and saying, Renoko Rashi is giving a good presentation here in Copenhagen, his first lecture in Denmark. He talked about people who lived thousands of years ago. Now what are you going to do with that knowledge? It's not enough just to feel good about yourself. What are you going to do? What organization are you going to belong to? What are you going to do? It's not enough just to know. You must act. Kwame Nkrumah used to say, thought without practice is empty, and action without thought is blind. We must be thinkers and doers. This little boy is Wodabi. He's from Niger. And these children are in Ghana. This is in a school that I visited. They make them keep their hair cut short because hair should not be an issue. You come to school to learn. In the United States, it's an issue. School is a fashion contest. Who's got the latest pair of Air Jordans? Who's got the latest this, the latest that? Who's got the longest weave? School children. When I go to a school in the United States, I have to pass through a metal detector. Because children have guns. Sometimes children five years old brings guns to school. Brings guns, brings gun to school. Brings guns to school. Whatever this is, I should limit myself to this. In Mexico, in Costa Chica, these children have very low self-esteem. All they know is they were slaves. And so I go to these places from time to time, if I'm lucky, and do presentations, and you can see them transform before their very eyes when they see the image of black Christ, when I talk about Imhotep, when I talk about pyramid builders, they know that they have a history beyond slavery. In the Netherlands, I got stranded in Amsterdam a few years ago, and I went, I booked a nice hotel, so I could, you know, gripe. And the first thing I did was get on Facebook and complain. And these sisters said, from the Netherlands, says, we know you're meant to stay here. In fact, we're going to come get you and bring you to another part of the Netherlands, and you're going to stay with us for a week. And I met them. I met their families, their husbands. Had a wonderful time. They organized a lecture for me in a place called Breda. And these are some of the children with these big eyes. Looking at y'all saying, what you going to do now? from Honduras, I showed this one earlier, these are from the people called the Garifuna. From Haiti, from Peru, a child from the Caribbean, but actually this picture was taken at a school in Toronto, Canada. Isn't she beautiful? She came up and asked me for an autograph. She was very shy because she's dark. Sometimes dark complexion people are made to feel very sensitive about their skin complexion. To me, this is what I call fair skin. Yeah. Because fair means good. I'm defining it from my perspective. And that's good hair. Yeah. And these children are from the Gambia. I don't know if the brother is still here, but somebody raised their hand and said they were from Gambia. I've been to Gambia twice. I lectured in Gambia. I was there for the last Roots Festival, as a matter of fact. I met the president. And these children are from a place called Jufre. And this is what a brother named Alex Hayden traced his lineage to a man named Conte Kente. These children have expectations of us. I wonder what you're all going to do. Are you going to make us proud? What will your legacy be? What will your statement in life be? How will people remember you? What will they say? Well, they say this, this sister had the longest fingernails. This sister had the longest weave. This brother slept with the most women. This brother had the biggest car. Is that it? Are we capable of more than that? Or will they say this was a wonderful parent? This person found a cure for cancer. This person found a cure for AIDS. This person helped build this organization called Afro Empowerment. This person was a great historian. This person was a great this. This sister was a great that. How will future generations remember you? Will they talk about you with honor and awe, like we talk about Imhotep and those Africans from Kemet, Egypt? Or will they say you were trifling, that you did nothing, that you were ashamed to be African, that you only took up space? 
What will future generations, these are powerful things. How will you be remembered? What will you do? How will you advance the cause of African liberation? How will you make the world a better place? These are powerful questions that we should all be able to answer. And finally, this image right here. And this is really where we start. I could have done this, showed this picture from the beginning. Our history did not begin in chains, will not end in chains. Never let anyone confine you to slavery. Never let anyone confine you to colonization. Africa is where humanity began. Africa is where human culture began. Africa is where civilization began. We are a great and mighty people. Act like it. Lift your hands and be proud of who you are. Don't be ashamed to be African. Be proud of it. Lift your hands and be proud of who you are. Be proud of your fathers and be proud of your mothers. In the words of Marcus Garvey, in the past we created a marvelous civilization. And we shall in the future with God's grace create another that will astonish the world. And that's my message for you today. So God bless you. Thank you. Then I want to thank the members of African of Afro Empowerment who have made sacrifices to bring me here. I hope that you were all able to make a, a donation to them of some kind. I hope that they've given out information about how you can join them and work with them. So I'm grateful to them for allowing me to come back to Denmark for the third visit. Now, I want to entertain some questions, but first I don't know if a member of the organization makes them want, wants to make an announcement or Comment. Thank you. We can turn all the lights back on if you want. Maybe just take some time for them to come back on. I don't know if they're here or not, but let me say this too. I want to thank um, the technicians, you know, who have set up the equipment and what have you. Anybody that I did not acknowledge, this is my opportunity to do that. Thank you everybody for coming. This isn't just a black thing, this is an everybody's thing. African people, is every, African history is everybody's history. And this message wasn't just for the black people, this was for everybody. So everybody who came today, I'm grateful. All right. Uh, yes, first of all, everybody please give a round of applause for our brothers. He was, here for you. he was here for us. He was here for all of us. He was here for we. Just like everybody that volunteered here today, we were here for each other. You know, there's a lot of people that, that may underestimate that, may try to use psychology against you and make you think that what you have to offer is meaningless. But actually it's not, because when we come together, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the actual odds are. If we come together with the right mind, we're actually going to put our message out there and we're going to unite and we're going to make a difference and we're going to change how we feel and we're going to change how things are. Our brother Renoko spoke a lot about identity. He kept redefining it, coming coming up and saying, this is how I define myself. And that's very relevant in the political discussion in Denmark. We always hear this N-word pointed at us. We always hear this, this Ulani pointed at us. We always hear somebody else's definition of us, right? But that's what politics is. Who do we define ourselves as? And that's why Renoko is here, to give us a little reminder. And thank, thank the ancestors that we have people like Renoko to go around and do things for the right reason to give us that little reminder that we need from time to time. Because we might need that every 20 years. Don't take it for granted. Every 30 years. The legacy, the battles, the struggles, they continue for, for centuries. And we have our brother here today to help us do that. Let's give a round of applause. Thank you.